Hello, and welcome to today's dialogue webinar, which is about the rank operator. Uh, if you're watching on dialogue.tv, you can participate in the chat, in the text chat, which is somewhere around here, um, and Adam is in the chat uh, to talk with you and also forward me any questions and comments that you have uh, for today's webinar. So, to begin with, I'd like to uh, show you a problem I've been having. It's quite a simple problem, I suppose, in APL, or at least simple to state. I have a three element vector, 1, 10, 100, and I have two three element vectors, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, and I'd like to multiply my vector by each of my other vectors. Uh, as you can see here, expressed as two statements separated by a diamond. The problem I have is that my two vectors live in a matrix. Now I can see how uh, I'd like my three element vector to be extended uh, into an array so that I can multiply it with my two vectors in the matrix. Um, but dialogue doesn't quite see it the way I do at the moment. And you know, I was really uh, thinking, wouldn't it be nice uh, if I could just say, multiply on vectors, right? Can I multiply on vectors so that my vector on the left hand side matches up with the two vectors in my matrix and I get the result I want. Well, it turns out that since dialog version 14, you have been able to do this using the rank operator. And that's the focus of today's webinar. In fact, the rank operator is a really powerful and uh, dynamic way of applying functions to subarrays, as I hope you'll see today. Uh, in fact, it's so good that some people of some authority have claimed that of all the operators introduced since the beginning of APL, uh, pride of place should be given to the rank operator. And really that's because it's kind of the key con concept and construct uh, that you need to really benefit from what is called leading axis theory. Uh, this is the idea which you'll see a lot more of uh, as I go through this where our primitive functions, or in general just our functions, uh, by default work on the leading or first axis of an array, or perhaps they deal with the major cells. Right? For example, tally, uh, highlight that here, tally function counts the number of major cells. Uh, the grade function gives the order of indices of major cells if they were sorted. So we'll look at a lot more of this in a moment. Um, but I just wanted to say that in terms of uh, modern APL, so leading axis theory is in J, uh, and there's something somewhat analogous to it in K even. Um, but if you're looking to learn modern dialogue APL, then I think as well as leading axis theory, you should probably get comfortable with defens because they're really useful for both uh, functional style um, data transformation type problems, and they're also really useful for iteratively building up a solution to some problem, especially if that can be expressed in a single line. And uh, another really great modern uh, dialogue feature is the train syntax. So here's a link to a previous webinar all about trains. It's actually kind of funny that, uh, so the train syntax was invented by Ken Iverson uh, on a flight when he's traveling by plane. It turns out that the rank operator was invented by Arthur Whitney on a train journey. So it's sounding to me like if uh, you want to be the person who comes up with the next great APL construct, maybe you should get on a bus or something. So anyway, there'll be a little bit of um, historical context and talking about what leads up, to what, what has led up to the rank operator. 
Uh, but before we get really into it, I just want to define some terms for people who might not be that familiar um, so that we're all on the same page. So we're going to be talking about the rank of arrays and subarrays a lot. And the rank is simply the number of dimensions an array has. So in this example, we have a rank three array or three dimensional array. Okay. And according to the APL wiki, uh, a cell is a subarray, which is formed by selecting a single index along some number of leading axes and the whole of each trailing axis. So we can see this uh, a bit more clearly with some examples using the index function squad here. So in this first example, I have a length one index into a rank three array, and that allows me to select a rank two subarray. If I provide a length two index, then I get back a rank one subarray or vector. And if I give a full length three index, then I get back a zero cell or scalar. Uh, if you'd like, you know, some further discussion on these terms, uh, in my webinar on selecting from arrays at 12 minutes and 40 seconds in, I have a section where I kind of contrast between this sort of rank and cells subarrays way of looking at arrays versus uh, looking at arrays in terms of their axes, which might be uh, considered maybe a more traditional or older style of, of thinking about arrays, I suppose, uh, if rank is the new style. But just to reiterate and also introduce one more piece of terminology, a major cell is a cell of rank one less than that of the entire array from which it's selected. Right, so for this example, we have a three dimensional array, a rank three array, and the major cells are the two matrices. And then going in decreasingly major order, so less and less major, each of these matrices consists of three one cells or vectors. And then in turn, each of these vectors consists of four zero cells or scalars. So that's just the terminology we're going to be using today. So I said I'd give, give a little bit of the uh, context, um, partly because I want to shout out this paper. Uh, this year, Roger Huey and Morton Kronberg published um, a fairly comprehensive account of the development of APL since 1978. And this has a really nice section on the rank operator in it. And uh, in there they state that, and I guess, you know, could be obvious, but maybe not. The rank operator wasn't invented out of nowhere, just all of a sudden, like some miracle. It was the result of a series of uh, developments over a number of years. And there's one in particular that I'd like to look at because it's quite interesting um, when thinking about the rank operator, how it came about and also what it means. In 1978, Ken Iverson published this report on, Ivers uh, on operators and functions where he defines something or he classifies some functions as things called uniform functions. So if you've done any APL, you should be aware of what a scalar function is. And when applying scalar functions dyadically with two arguments, the argument arrays have to be conformable. So we can express this in dialog version 18 with this fork here. So this is the three train. And it basically says our arrays are conformable if either the shapes of our arrays match. So this is match over shape or one of our arrays is a scalar, in which case we use scalar extension. There also happens to be something called singleton extension. But anyway, Iverson defines a uniform function as a function for which the shape of the result of the application of the function only depends on the shape of the arguments. It doesn't depend on the values, right? So we can again write this as a, a nice 
fork in dialog version 18. Formally, I suppose, um, a function f is a uniform function if there is exists some function g such that g over shape is identical to shape atop f. Okay, so the shape of the result of applying a function is the same as some function of the shapes of the arguments themselves. And you can try this yourself. But to clarify, let's look at a couple of examples. If f is an outer product, right, so dyadic, then the shape of the result of an outer product is simply the catenation of the shapes of the argument arrays. Okay, so you can see here, our arguments have shape two, three, and four, five, and the shape of the result is just two, three, comma, four, five. If F is monadic comma or ravel, then the shape of the result is the ravel of the product of the shapes of the shape of the argument. Um, it could be a little neater, but we have to put the ravel here because the result of the shape function is always a vector. Okay, one last example. Uh, if F is monadic transpose, then the shape of the result is just the reverse of the shape of the argument. So the reason uniform functions are important in this story is because they can uh, fairly straightforwardly be extended to higher rank arrays in a systematic way by treating the argument in the higher rank case as an array of the subarrays, which are the, you know, the rank one less, you know, which might be the, in the original definition. And then the result is just an array consisting of the individual results. Maybe if that's a bit wordy, we'll start looking at examples now. Oh, and by the way, if, um, if you have a non-uniform function, Iverson says that you can get a similar type of uh, extension to higher rank by enclosing the result of the non-uniform function, such as the index generator iota, where this, the length of the result depends on the actual number that you give it. So now let's start looking at uh, the rank operator proper. So let's start with monadic application. In this case, we're looking at reverse first. Now this is a leading axis function in that by default, it works along the leading or first axis of our argument array, and it just reverses the positions of the major cells. And what this means is I can say, I want to reverse the vectors in each matrix. All right, so we apply reverse first rank two, and we can swap the positions of vectors within each matrix. And likewise, if I go down to rank one, I can ask to reverse the positions of scalars within each vector. And of course, I could go down to rank zero and reverse the scalars, but that doesn't do anything. If you're learning uh, the rank operator uh, and you want some training wheels, so to speak, then I can recommend using the enclose function uh, so that you can then see clearly what are the cells that I'm going to apply my function to. And then you can just replace your use of enclose with whatever your desired monadic function is and get the result that you want. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the leading axis stuff now. So in particular, rank has no effect on trailing axis functions, right? So here I've got plus slash, which sums the rows of an array. But what this means is if I apply this to the sub arrays using rank, it's the same as if I just applied it to the whole array initially. And you can see a similar thing with reverse. So if I apply 
to the rows, I'm reversing the rows. If I apply to the matrices, I'm reversing the rows. If I apply to the uh, rank three array or the whole array, I'm just reversing the rows. And this means that uh, these days I start to have a leaning towards leading axis versions of different functions, right? So on the left here, we have two fairly popular expressions. Uh, the first one is for sorting a vector. And the second one is for finding the mean average of a numeric vector. But as I've been saying, these only work on vectors. So we can't apply the rank operator. And we can't apply bracket axis either because it only works for selected primitives. On the other hand, if you start to think in leading axis functions, in terms of leading axis functions, uh, grade has always been leading axis oriented. And then in conjunction with the index function squad, we have this nice sorting idiom, um, which by default will arrange the major cells in order, but you can then arrange each subarray by specifying particular ranks. And similarly uh, with this fork, which has become quite a famous rendition of the uh, mean average. All right, so using reduce first and using tally to count the major cells. Um, so one other thing, when I was uh, preparing for this webinar, I was watching some old presentations about the rank operator. And one thing that came up, um, especially from people who are familiar with bracket axis, is, okay, you're telling us that, you know, this is better because you can use it with user-defined functions. Can I take my user-defined function and apply it, for example, well, can I apply it to the columns uh, of my array as I could, you know, with plus slash or even reverse um, using bracket axis one? And the answer is no. Uh, in this case, with rank, you would have to transpose your array first. But really what this means is to get the most out of uh, leading axis theory and the rank operator, you want to use leading axis functions built out of those primitives. And you want to arrange your data in a leading axis friendly way. So that you have to do, so you don't have to do all these transposes. So that's monadic rank application. And if you take these considerations, you get some benefits um, in contrast to bracket axis. Rank is index origin independent, and it allows you to apply it to user-defined functions. So that was a monadic function application of using rank, uh, which I hope was I hope that all makes sense. It's just selecting subarrays of a particular rank. Now let's look back at uh, my problem from the beginning to look at dyadic function application. So I obviously can see as a human, you know, where I want these arrays to match up, but I get a rank error if I just use the times primitive. Some of you proponents of the bracket axis construct might be saying, I'll oh, just apply it to the second axis, you know, because the second axis is the, is the one you want. Um, and this is okay in this case, but then I have to do some extra um, shape manipulation if I want to apply this function to vectors again, because this because now I go back to my vector, vector times vector case and my conformability means nothing. I've got a rank error. But as before we saw, well, before we just used a single one, but uh, in general, for dyadic rank, you specify two ranks, uh, the first for the left argument and the second for the right argument. And this works in my vector case and it works in my matrix case. So this is good. Uh, for me in this particular case. It's also worth looking at, oh, sorry, I also meant to say, um, since we have repeating ranks, there's a shortcut in this case, you can just specify a single rank and this will be the rank of cells taken from the left and the rank of cells 
selected from the right. It's also worth looking at another slightly different but similar example um, because I think it's been argued before that you could extend, you could have an extension to scalar extension. We might call it frame or cell extension. Uh, read the papers I referenced to get some more clarification on those terms. But uh, basically, since the tally of our vector in this case is three and the tally of our matrix is three, then it's conceivable that the interpreter would just match these up for us. Uh, but of course, it doesn't do that right now. And once again, yeah, you can have a go with bracket axis. Um, and this is better because we can multiply our vector and distribute the scalars with each of our rows. Um, and we can still multiply vectors together, but at a certain point, if we want a really general function, you know, uh, we lose, we, we end up losing scalar extension, which could be slightly frustrating. Or really, you know, with bracket axis, one of the things is you, you'll find yourself with lots of ifs and buts and caveats that you have to deal with if you want to use a single function for lots of different cases. In contrast, we can look at the solution using rank. So here we specify zero cells from the left, which is each of our three scalars and one cells from the right, which is each of our three vectors. So a scalar gets paired with a vector, a scalar paired with a vector, and a scalar paired with a vector to produce our result. And this still works if we're multiplying uh, vectors, although it's not the same as the previous example because we've uh, swapped the dimensions around. And in this case, we've actually stumbled upon an expression for the outer product. Uh, and I'll come back to that a bit more in a second. But lastly, we can see that this expression retains our scalar extension. Uh, and this is actually quite good that um, if you specify a rank which is greater than the actual rank of the argument, this means just select the whole array. So for our last expression here, this one could actually have been any integer. If you're learning uh, dyadic uses of rank, we have another uh, helper function. Uh, before version 18, you can get the same effect with um, a defen, which is just alpha and omega stranded together. All right, so curly brace, alpha, omega, end brace. But from version 18, you can use over, uh, comma, over enclose as a kind of juxtapose function. All right, so you can use this and see clearly now that with rank 0, 1, we're selecting scalars from the left paired with a vector on the right, a scalar from the left and a vector on the right, a scalar from the left, a vector from the right. And then once again, simply replacing our juxtapose function with uh, a plus. Well, in this case, or whatever dyadic function we want to use. So, oh yeah, one other thing we could do is um, take the, the sort of words example from the beginning a step further. We could define scalars, you know, for rank zero, vectors uh, for rank one, matrices are rank two. Um, also from version 18, I don't believe this is available in previous ones. You can specify um, max rank or rank infinity or the whole array as the floor of Zilda, which is basically the largest representable number in dialog, but it's effectively infinity. Um, however, you'll often see rank 99 used to mean infinity since uh, dialog won't be implementing uh, arrays of greater than rank 99. I think I can say that fairly confidently. So with, th with this, we can sort of um, have a view with our English words and say, okay, I want to pair scalars with the vectors as, as in the case a second ago, or 
I want to pair my scalars with matrices. Now in this case, the right argument itself is a matrix, so we're taking the whole array and distributing that along each of our scalars. And this also means that in this case, we could replace matrices with the whole array and get the same result out. So, um, for an example of that in action, kind of, a moment ago I said we stumbled upon an expression for the outer product, um, and I've seen it expressed previously as rank 0, 99, right? So pair the scalars with the whole array, and I guess it matches them up. It's not quite the whole truth. So you can see here, outer product match, we should be getting ones along the leading diagonal like this. But if we apply match rank 0, 99, we're getting a three element vector. Um, so why is this? Well, if we use our juxtapose function, we can see why we're actually pairing scalars with the whole array, which is a vector. And of course, scalars don't match vectors because they have a different shape. So how to resolve this? We can actually apply each to see the, the true definition, right? So here we can see the scalars that we intended to match together in our nested array, and then just replace that function with match and we get the right result. So here you can see that actually outer product in terms of rank is f each rank 0, 99, but since before we were using a scalar function, uh, the each is redundant. And if you really want to, you can also define each in terms of, of rank. Um, I'll leave that as an exercise for the, for the viewer. So hopefully you're starting to see how the rank operator is um, quite general in terms of uh, performing either applying functions to particular subarrays or applying dyadic functions between particular subarrays you've matched together, right? And this also means that, okay, it's this scalar extension extension called cell extension. It also encompasses outer product. Uh, also quite interestingly, you can represent inner product. So I'm not gonna go into detail on the actual expression here, um, but I wanted to point out or um, at least refer to this talk uh, in from Dialogue 2009, Roger Huey gave a presentation on the rank operator, um, which I found really interesting for two reasons. The first being that it's actually before rank was implemented in Dialogue. So it's a model of the rank operator in terms of older constructs, and that's really interesting to see. Um, but also, Roger said in this that uh, when they came up with this model for the dot in a product using rank, it actually led them to a better implementation of the dot product in the interpreter under the hood. Um, and this is, you know, just another testament. I, I think I've seen him say something similar about a particular train uh, that was, that allowed them to see a better way of implementing uh, certain algorithms and certain primitives. So yeah, to me, this is a testament to those particular constructs. Um, I think especially the ones I listed at the beginning in, in you know, under the uh, title of modern APL, these particular additions to APL that n improve it as a tool of thought so much that not only is it a benefit to the end user being able to, uh, in the case of trains, it's um, the ability to compose functions uh, to form sort of what I like to call compound words and expand your APL vocabulary that way. And in the case of the rank operator, um, oh wait, sorry, um, you know, oh yeah, being able to um, match up different cells, right, of arrays and uh, think of your data in these sort of um, cell chunks. But yeah, so not only is it a benefit to the end user, but also the implementers uh, finding new ways uh, and better ways of, of implementing the primitives. So that's really cool. Um, I apologize if I've rattled through this a bit. Um, I've tried, uh, I'm trying to pause 
trying to get better at, at pausing to see if questions are coming through. So um, if you have anything to ask, Adam is there in the chat. But the last thing uh, for today that I wanted to show, because I mean, you'll, you know, this is just an introduction to the rank operator. And so I want to show you lastly, uh, a full specification of rank is actually a three element vector MLR, where L and R are our left and right rank specifications for the dyadic case as just a second ago, but M is an optional specification for a monadic case. So for an example, just quickly, here we have a three dimensional numeric array. And here we have a derived function, uh, reverse first rank three, one, two. Okay. And so what this means is we can take this function and apply it monadically and it will apply to the three cells of our argument, or in this case, that's the whole array, hence reversing the order of two cells, right? Or in this case, reversing the order of major cells. <clears throat> if we apply this dyadically, then we have a different function. We're actually uh, rotating the matrices according to the vector on the left. So that is um, everything about, you know, how to call rank for uh, positive numbers um, in, you know, the sort of basic use cases, monadic application and a single dyadic application of rank. When I was preparing this, um, it turns out there was actually quite a lot of stuff that you can say about rank. So I'm intending to return in I think about six weeks time uh, and cover some more advanced uses of the rank operator. So uh, negative rank and using multiple applications of rank and um, talking about rank and transpose, which I alluded to earlier, but I will talk about it in more detail and specifically um, in comparison to bracket axis. Okay, I'll, I'll still sit here for a moment. Um, maybe I'll play the jingle again. Uh, the next dialogue webinar is in two weeks time. This is uh, Adam's final installment of language features of dialogue version 18 in depth. Um, you've seen me using some of the features earlier, to, um, earlier today. I'll wait here a moment for uh, any questions. Otherwise, uh, thanks very much for watching. Go on, let's have, let's have the jingle one more time. Does it play? Yeah, it seems to be. Okay, yeah. So, um, very much to hear again what the, yeah, integers. So, in general, we're specifying what rank subarray we want to apply on that. Let's go back to, yeah, this one, I suppose. Uh, and we'll look at, I wonder if I should whip out. No, that's okay. Um, So the 
the integer operand argument to rank. Ooh, my bad. Music's still playing. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, let's go again. Yeah, to reiterate, um, the rank of an array, you know, in general is the number of dimensions it has. So your scalars are rank zero. Uh, their shape is the empty numeric vector. Vectors are rank one. Their shape is a vector. In fact, I suppose we can always look at uh, this expression. Actually, I don't know how helpful that is, and the font's quite small. Do, 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 do. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. You know, the shape of an array gives you the length of each of the dimensions, and then if you count the shape, that's the rank. And then, sorry, and then in the rank operator, I uh, hope that's okay, until the font is small. And then in the rank operator, we refer to the ranks of the arrays, uh, sorry, the ranks of the subarrays that we want to apply our functions to. All right, so it's a dyadic function, and then the rank operator in, in this example, and then specifying, okay, take the mm, something cells from the left argument. So take the zero cells from the left argument, of which there are three in this case, and pair them with vectors or one cells in the right argument in this case. All right. You'll get um you'll also get errors if the frames don't match, right? So let's say we're doing time. O to six. In this case, um our frame of scalars in our vector is has a size of four, right? So there are four scalars in the left, but there's only three uh vectors on the right in this case. So so we have it we try. Uh, but we get the length error because our frames don't match, the frames being the kind of collections of our cells. Right, so you still have a type of conformability that you need, um, but it's not your regular array conformability of scalar, uh, sorry, not scalar extension, of, of scalar dyadic functions. It's a frame conformability that makes that concept more general. Uh, okay, I hope that's clarified at least somewhat. And actually, it's worth saying, as with all uh, APL stuff, um, if you want to play with it, right? Get get a, get an interpreter out and get some arguments and some functions and some arrays and just try it out so you get a feel for it. All right, and then once you've mastered um, the basic, uh, once you've mastered the basic use of the rank operator uh, as shown today, then come back in six weeks. <laughs> I guess that's a long time. Um, or go on Stack Exchange, search APL cultivation. And there's a page on Stack Exchange where Adam has been giving lessons in the chat room. And there are two lessons um, on the rank operator. The first one is the basic uses, which have all been covered today. And the second one includes multiple rank, I think, there. Um, there's lots of stuff in the chat about rank and transpose yeah, in, the, in the APL Orchard chat. Um, but it's all scattered around, so I think we might make an effort to collect some of those examples. Some of them are quite good. Okay, if there's uh, okay, if there's nothing else, then I think uh, I'll just say thanks very much for watching. The next dialogue webinar is in two weeks, as I said before. Actually, I've already said this. Um, 
with Adam, who is in the chat right now. Okay. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, goodbye.